Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Addison Sports Special. Oh, yeah. Wow. Not bad, you guys. Yeah. Been in high school there. Wow. We have a great show for you tonight, folks. We're going to talk about a great stock car driver, Fred Lorenzen, the golden boy. With, and his, with his boyhood friend Tom Hodge and the man who put together a great display at the Elmhurst Historical Museum in Elmhurst, Mr. Lance Tauzer. And the tennis team from Fenton High is here, you heard them, uh, with their coach Adam Peterson. And uh, the varsity baseball team from Aston Trail High School with their coach uh, Steve Gilliam. They'll be here later. Hey, uh, Lance, nice to meet you, buddy. Nice, Tom. Uh, Uncle yeah. Tom, how nice, are you? Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, hey, you guys, man, we, we could spend three hours here, you know, but we only got like 14, 15 minutes to talk about Freddie Lorenzen. Uh, Tom, the early years with Freddie. Now, uh, you lived in Elmhurst on Berteau. He lived near you and when you guys were seven, eight years old. Right. Tell the folks about that. Well, yeah, Fred lived on Church Street. Okay. which is about four blocks, five blocks away from where I live. But actually, I met him at the Elmhurst East End Swimming Pool. Oh, okay. He was actually a, a really a great diver. That's is that right? Way before he got into stock car racing. Yeah. He's just a good athlete. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he, I think he came out of the womb racing. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, is there? We, yeah. used to, we used to race swimming, and yeah. he, he beat me. <laughs> <clears throat> we yeah. raced the, the Schwinn bikes with the big balloon tires. We yeah. raced those. Did you ever he, beat him with F1? He, and no, not that. No, <laughs> no. Okay. And then uh, and he, bought, he made a, a contraption with his dad's uh, lawnmower mm -hmm. thing, and he'd run around with that. I never had one, but yeah. uh, okay. if, if I did, I'm sure he'd beat me with that. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we got a little older, I had a Cushman motor scooter, and he got a Cushman motor scooter. Boy, I finally top. got something that I had a race with Freddie, and I beat him. Yeah. And when I, I saw him in 19, I think it was 1963 or 64, he you was mean. back home, and I uh, stopped to see him. And I says, remember we used to race in the He says, yeah, you... SOB, I, I never could beat you. I he hated says, yeah. yeah, I says, yeah, and that's the only thing. He, <laughs> but he, he was a, he was a terrific guy, and even with all the fame, and you know, he was a legend even in his early days. Mm -hmm. uh, he was just a regular. He, he, it never was aloof. And, yeah, uh, never back, went to his head. Come back to Elmer. Yeah, uh, Lance at the museum, which is uh, right downtown Elmhurst, right, Lance? Yes. Uh, do you have any real early things of uh, of Freddie's there, his go kart or anything like that? We don't actually have his go kart. I, I, the story actually goes that he built this go kart with his uh, father's lawnmower motor, mm -hmm. and um, that's and true. And he drove it around the neighborhood until the neighborhood the neighbors called the police on him, and they took the the go kart away. Uh -huh. uh, he he he's still angry about that today is that, that right but, uh, <laughs> that, that was you know that was that was his early start yeah I, I think I could echo the same the research that we've done at the museum about Fred's early days is that he and his friends, the Tallarico brothers, right. uh, you know, terrorized Elmhurst with their speed, and uh, he turned that into a career, and, mm -hmm. and that's what the exhibit's all about, is how somebody who came from Elmhurst uh, became the top, most popular NASCAR driver in the 1960s. He won uh, the most popular driver award two years, and it was, you know, really a, a testament to the fact that he was one of the first drivers to come from the north. I mean, let's face it, Elmhurst, Illinois is the north. Yeah, right. And stock car racing in the 1960s was a southern man's uh, game mm -hmm. and he went down there and he challenged these drivers and he was uh, his approach was different he decided that he was going to be a thinking man's driver and he uh, he wouldn't just mash the pedal to the floor race to the front and try to hang on to the end he actually calculated exactly how many pit stops he was going to need uh, how many it? tires how many tires he was going to have to take mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. um, he actually really turned it into more of a tactical sport and he was very successful and, and one of the things that we celebrate in our exhibit is the fact that even though he never ran a full season at the NASCAR level, he only picked uh, and chose the races that he thought he could win, mm -hmm. he, was still, he still won with such frequency that it was just staggering and historic to be perfectly honest. In mm -hmm. 1964, you were mentioning 1964, he only entered 16 races, but he won eight of them, wow. including five in a row, which has never been matched till it's today. 63, he even had a better record. Well, in 63, right? he yeah. was the first driver ever to win more than $100,000 right. in a year. He won $122,000. Yeah, and he still didn't, that, no? still didn't still right. race a full season, and right. he still won more money. Mm -hmm. may, uh, I, may I interject something? Even before he got to NASCAR, he was, he was the USAC champion. Twice. Twice, <laughs> in the late 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, and back then, the northern guys, they ran the north 
circuit ran under USAC banner mm -hmm. and the South circuit ran under NASCAR banner. Okay. So he did that like on the side while winning two championships at O'Hare Speedway, which was on Mannheim Road, little yeah, quarter, right. half That's mile right. track. Mm -hmm. But he just dominated it there. And how he got in with Holman and Moody is that they, he had one of their engines and they went up to watch him race. And you know, if he had had this car set up properly, I mean, he could drive a, 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 a car that wasn't even set up properly and, mm -hmm. and still win. Yeah, right. So they knew they had a diamond in the rough. Yeah. And now, when, Holman. when Holman and Moody went to Ford, they said, I've got this driver for your, mm -hmm. your car. That's Fred Lorenzen. Okay. We don't now, want no part of him. We never heard of him. Yeah, right. If you but, want to know a little bit more about Holman Moody, here's a beautiful book here. Imagine you can get at most any bookstore. Uh, can you get in on that, Rick? They're uh, built little race car engines and so on, and uh, quite quite a company. They, okay, uh, they were like the Henrik Motors or Roush Fenway just of, of the that, '60s. Of that, yeah, yeah. That. yeah. Uh, but oh, by the way, folks, if you you got to get over to the museum, where were where? Give me that address. Sure, it's at 120 East Park Avenue in downtown Elmhurst. It's just west of York Road behind the Fifth Third Bank, and we're open six days a week, uh, uh, Tuesdays through Sundays from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., and admission is always free. Great. And if you go in there, folks, I'm telling you, it's just impressive. Lance got 20-foot high posters and so on. It's just, I mean, it's amazing. I was amazed, you know. Really, you did a terrific well, job. I uh, have to say, actually, we, we, we did more for this exhibit than we've done for many. I, I flew to North Carolina to the NASCAR Hall of Fame Great. and picked up uh, artifacts from them. I drove to the Motorsports Hall of Fame in Michigan and picked up artifacts from them. And I went to the Illinois Stock Car Hall of Fame in Roscoe, Illinois and uh, borrowed artifacts from them as well as from the Lorenzen family. Right. And mm -hmm. so we've done, we've done more. We, we're celebrating this guy not only because he was really famous, but he's, because he's from Elmhurst and not enough people know about him. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and yeah. a lot of that has to do with the fact that he uh, decided to retire early. He came back to Elmhurst and he started a family, became a realtor, right. and he kind of shut the door on that sort of chapter on his life. And Do you and, think the accident, me, do you think the accident with uh, uh, Fireball Junior, Roberts. Uh, Fireball Roberts really uh, affected yeah. him when he, he, yeah. he died. He said, he told me that it did. Yeah. 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 No, no, that's, that's, that. That was part of it. It, yeah. it was, it was, you know, his hero died in a crash, uh, Fireball Roberts, and a couple years later, it basically, he had won the Daytona 500. He'd, he'd basically, he was also one of the first drivers to win on every, every super major speedway. speedway. Yeah. 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 The okay. first, first right. driver to do that. I mean, that's Rockingham. Uh, Darlington, I mean, Darlington, Talladega, right. yeah, Atlanta, right. and, and of course Daytona. They said that even to this day now, he still gets uh, letters from oh, Southern, yeah. the Southern guys who used to oh, watch yeah. him, you know, yes. get he still has a fan letters base. a week or maybe more than that. He still has a fan yeah, base. Yeah, he's got a fan base, a yeah. good old boy from Chicago, right? Yeah. Race. Actually, <laughs> he really wore Elmhurst on his sleeve. He told everybody that he was from Elmhurst. Right. And, oh, is there? And right. so uh, there are legions of Fred Lorenzen fans yeah. all over the South that only know about Elmhurst because Fred, that's where Fred Lorenzen is from. They kind of think of this <laughs> mythical place yeah. that where, yeah. where race car drivers are from, but is he he was very proud of where he yeah. came from, and uh, he still is today. Yeah, if you get in there, folks, here, Rick, can you get in on that? There's uh, just a few of the massive displays and trophies that Freddie uh, caught right in there. I don't know who that is in the Dude, picture. That, that, isn't that you in there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, the legend. Chicago Tribune uh, could have found you. somebody better looking to put in the paper. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you get, like I say, folks, you get a chance to go in there. And they'll have, I understand, well, he's in several halls of fame now. Motorsports right? halls of fame. Motors Sports mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. Sure. But and he was we voted were, one of the 50 greatest drivers. 1998. Just, yep. Right. Okay. We're trying to get him, or not we, but I mean, evidently, right. uh, oh, we. friends is we, yes. yeah. <laughs> into the NASCAR Hall, Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, right. Must take some doing. Well, but it, well they it just started it. Long. Yeah, that's they it. They just started it. They have a. They only put in five a year, and they should have it like baseball, where mm. they where they can they can put in more old timers. I mean, like Fireball Roberts. There's so many great drivers that are just sitting on the side waiting to be voted in. Mm -hmm. And uh, like they voted in Rusty Wallace last year, and he said on television that Fred Lorenzen deserves to be in here more than I do. Right. That's great. And he said this he right said on television. Really yes. good. Absolutely. Good so I mean, it's a, a real injustice 
but I think they have to change the rules to well, put in some of these old yeah. timers. But I understand that the, the, he certainly the fans there. can vote him in, right? Yes, Is they get a one web, vote. Did the website come yeah. up yet? Uh, you know, he hasn't been nominated again. He's been nominated twice already. Mm -hmm. And assuming he gets nominated again, uh, the fans get one vote. And there's a voting committee. And, and the museum and the Chicagoland Speedway and some other people are, and, and, the, and the grassroots effort are really trying to get him in. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the, the long and short of it is, is that uh, Fred um, had a relatively short career, albeit extremely successful. So Correct. we kind of equate it to like Sandy Koufax in baseball, where right. his, yeah. he had a short career, but he was extremely uh, uh, great. And mm -hmm. so, and the other aspect of it is the fact that he, when he kind of closed the book on his career, he didn't hang around in the sport like a lot of other guys do and keep his sort of presence there. He, he didn't he didn't show up at uh, special events. In fact, uh, Amanda, his daughter, and uh, and Chris tell a great story about when uh, the Daytona 500 was celebrating its 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. and they would always, you know, call up Fred and say, "Would you like to come to a race?" And he would say, ah, "I don't want to come." To a race. <laughs> and and this time they said, "Well, this is the 50th anniversary of the Daytona 500. We really would like you to come. What, what's it going to take?" And jokingly he said, "Send me a private jet." <laughs> And they did. <laughs> they did. And they got a FedEx the next yeah, morning, and they right. all went to the yeah. to the He's, Daytona 500, yeah. uh, the 500, the fiftieth anniversary. And so, um, I think that has something to do with it. There, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he he raced in the 1960s. There are people that are on the voting committee that weren't even born then. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, education but, needs to happen. And that's but what I we're thought doing. I thought the the public could vote. I got, I've got a website yeah. here from yeah. before www.nascar.com/promos. Slash H O F. Yeah, what, what the fans the get thing. one vote. Right. Yeah. Okay, you can vote so. every day. You can vote as so. many times as you want every day. Yeah. Which I, I mean, did. You can do it. Oh still yeah. Do that. I okay. used to vote 12 times a day. Every time I went on the computer, I'd, I'd <laughs> yeah. vote. Yeah. All right, folks, you get that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe Mike will put it up on the screen a little yeah. once we add it a little bit. But Mike, I'll give that to you. Okay. www.nascar.com/promos/hol. So folks, uh, get a vote in for Freddie Elmhurst and guy. Or Chicago uh, and he area. Will, he will be on the ballot. He's in the original 25 people that were voted in, that were put on the ballot. Mm -hmm. They they vote in five people every year, and then they get five new people in the year. But they don't kick the old five. They don't kick the rest. The ones that didn't make it, they do not kick off the ballot. Mm. So he will be on the ballot, but to my knowledge, fan voting has not started yet. No, okay. No. All right, uh, we got yet. a minute, fellas. Uh, okay. Let's see, just one thing, uh, uh, Lance. The Bobby Allison's coming to town, right? Yeah. For, uh, uh, it's over there. That, yeah, there's here. a poster over there. Yeah, yeah. we're very, we're very fortunate. Uh, Bobby Allison, right who has a great connection to right Fred. Oh, Bobby Allison, uh, racer now. Get in on that, Rick. So uh, Bobby Allison uh, raced actually Fred. Uh, when Fred decided to retire, he looked for a driver that had similar characteristics, could set up a chassis, was sort of a uh, the same type of driver, and he saw a kindred spirit in Bobby Allison. And Bobby, he served as Bobby Allison's team Richie, manager right? for the first two races that he raced for the Ford team, and they won both races. Is, yeah, right. And wow. um, Bobby Allison narrated our our, our uh, documentary that's in the exhibit, and he is coming April fourth from five to seven and it's a meet and greet and it's a it's an opportunity to rub elbows with with nascar royalty another and legend yeah another <laughs> legend yeah. and and uh it's it's great that he's been so supportive of the exhibit well i'll be there and i know tom will be there uh, absolutely All right. good uh, thanks a lot buddy. thanks for having me uh, tom thanks buddy thank you i will right, we'll be right back with fenton the daytona international speedway was built for and is best known for